Hello and welcome to another weekly financial update from RTS Financial Planning. As always, this is where we discuss some of the stories that have made the world of finance this week and also some of the subjects that our RTS Investment Committee are looking at as part of our investment strategy that we use with clients. So just before we dive in, again, just wanted to mention that if you do find these videos useful and you get some value out of them, it'd be really great if you're watching it on YouTube just to click the thumbs up uh, button just below the video as that really helps sort of spread the message and get other people watching the videos. So thank you for that. So what's happened this week? So overall, it was a very quiet week for stock markets. Not much happened. Uh, most of the world's stock markets ended up in with a positive return over the week. In the UK, one of the big stories to break was around unemployment. So we've now found out that unemployment has gone up to 4.1% um, over the last quarter. Uh, and this is up from 3.9% from the previous quarter. So unemployment is rising slightly. But if we look around the world and compare this to um, other countries, what we can see is that as the furlough type schemes are starting to be pulled back, there isn't a huge surge in unemployment like a lot of people expected. Now, this may still come, uh, and the last quarter of the year could be the most difficult. So it could still come once these furloughs type schemes are rolled back completely. But like I say, at the moment, it's still just gradually rising. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Now, the Chancellor was quoted this week as saying he's gonna be creative in helping people keep their jobs and finding new jobs. So we'll have to wait and see. Also, inflation in the UK um, for August was down at 0.2%. So that means prices only rose just 0.2%. Again, this was down from 1% in July and has been largely blamed on the Eat Out to Help Out scheme, uh, making restaurant food much cheaper than normal. Now, low inflation is good news for borrowers and people wanting to spend, but bad news for savers as interest rates are likely to stay lower for longer, so you're not really earning anything on your money sat in cash. Eventually though, low inflation can be bad for everybody as its impact on the economy can be quite severe. If prices start falling and we end up in deflation, it means that people are less likely to spend because why would you spend today and buy something that's say £100 if you know in a few weeks time it's gonna be £80, you're just gonna hold off. And if people keep doing that, that means we're gonna end up in deflation. And it's a sign that the economy is going into reverse. Eventually, pro companies' profits are gonna be falling, they'll pay their staff lower wages, and there could be a lot more unemployment. I think inflation, low inflation in particular, is a temporary thing. I think it will start rising again soon, and central banks around the world are very keen to get an increased inflation to show that the economy is moving forward and recovering. There were a couple of bits of pension news this week. Um, firstly, we found out that a Treasury Minister um, reconfirmed the government's intention to raise the minimum age at which you can access your workplace or private pension from 55 to 57. Now, this change is going to take place in 2028, so it will impact anyone that's currently 47 years or younger. Now, tinkering with pension ages is nothing new. Many of you watching this video will probably remember the changes to the state pension age, which really impacted women especially. So the state pension age was equalised for men and women in about 2018, and both were brought in line to be age 65. Previously, women's state pension age was age 60, so quite a jump for, for women there. But now both men and women have faced uh, a rise in state pension age, which eventually will be 68. So because women have been impacted so significantly by this, there's been a, a campaign for some time now to appeal this decision through the courts. And this week we also saw two women who are negative, negatively impacted by these changes uh, lose uh, appeal against a high court ruling. Uh, other news, finally, the COVID situation has led to a big surge in financial scams, impersonation scams which have nearly doubled um, this over the first six months of the year compared to last year, costing around 58 million pounds in losses. Now an impersonation scam is usually where you receive an email from a trusted source, so it could be from uh, the police, from HMRC or from the bank, people impersonating these organizations with a link. They usually will say, 
um, that you've got a fine to repay or you need to click a link to claim a refund. Uh, you click that link and then you might sort of unwittingly download a virus or you might end up transferring money to a, a criminal account. So do be vigilant. I think the fact that more people are working from home, people are trying to exploit this. Um, some There's also been reports of criminals that pretending to be IT companies um, and asking you to click on various links to sort out your IT uh, security software at home. So please, please be vigilant of these types of scams. And if you're unsure of anything, unsure of a message you've received, please feel free to run it by us. And we do work with a regulator in reporting financial scams. Um, so we'll be happy to do this on, on your behalf. So that wraps it up for this week. As always, I hope you found it useful. Please leave a comment if you have any questions that you want answered around finance. Um, otherwise, until next time, take care.